All right, this is WMCX. I'm here with Dr. Frank of the Mr. T Experience. Um, do you guys enjoy playing the East Coast? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's a, uh, well, it's, you know, it's like anything else. There's some places that uh, that work out, and some that just don't work out. You know, so like uh, I think a lot of bands uh, will tell you that uh, you know playing in Connecticut is challenging. Yeah. Um, but you know, playing in like here or in New York is better. You know, it just it just depends. But sure, the yeah. East is great. Do you guys, uh, what do you like most about the East Coast? Not the, um, not the weather. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, actually, the, the weather today is yeah, very yeah. nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I mean, it, I guess just go. It, it, not so much specifically the east, but just going it elsewhere from where you come from is. Yeah. You know, every lo every place has its own character, and so even if it's bad, you're. You know, like Canada is not a fun place to tour. Yeah. It's very <laughs> difficult to tour. You know, but still, the experience of doing it. You gain something from it, you know. It helps if you play for an audience. Have a, a whole crowd that just stands staring at you and doesn't make any sort of reaction at all when you play, which which happens in some places. Uh, New England uh, people are, tend to be very reserved like that. But you, if you have that, having that experience at least a few times teaches you something about your songs, you know. Yeah. So if you just played in California where everyone's all nice and pleasant and uh, enjoying themselves all the time. Uh, you, you you wouldn't have the complete picture, so you know it's good to go elsewhere. That kind of leads me to the next question: What is going on right now in the East Bay scene? How's that scene going? On? <laughs> you know, I wish I could tell you. I have no clue. I, <laughs> yeah, I don't really, I don't really follow it too much. I, you know, I'm I'm uh, I'm not home that much, yeah. and when I'm home, going to check out bands is just not something I feel like doing. And yeah. so I don't know. I'm sure there, I'm sure there are some really good bands playing at parties and everything. And in like three or four years, they'll start they'll have records and start playing in clubs or whatever and then I'll be though those guys were great but yeah. I don't really know who they are now who those people are mm -hmm. um, when did you guys form 1986 okay. uh, what bands are you influenced by <clears throat> um, uh, you know a whole sorts of uh, things you know I mean uh, um, uh, in initially probably you know that you know the 70s British uh, punk rock mostly um you know not the 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 softer side of punk yeah. rock like the the boys and tv personalities was probably the biggest influence personally on me yeah. when i was a teenager you know and, yeah. um and i really like the soft boys and the swell maps and uh, you know like some artsy stuff like that and elvis costello and that sort of thing and then as i got as it went on like i kind of I started to get into country music, and so that was influenced. And all along, through all these influences, then I had all those, these other, the other kind of influences, which are the kind of thing, the influences that are negative influences. Yeah. Like I'm never going to do that. Yeah, but then and again, yeah. <laughs> that's probably that's probably been much more influential than the positive influences on me. Um, how do you get ideas for songwriting for your songwriting? Um, <clears throat> yeah, it, it's. I mean, it, it, it's based on most on uh, it, it's based on on experience, on personal experience, not not in a literal way, like every song is about a specific thing, but more in the way of just, you know, thinking about you're in situations and how, this is how you think about it, and then you try to put it in song form uh, yeah. to communicate that feeling or whatever. Um, and uh, and I, so I'm always kind of thinking along those lines, but as for when I, I'll just, I'll have the idea that will turn the vague uh, feeling of, of dissatisfaction and irritation mm. and bitterness into an actual song. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how that happens. That's like <clears throat> suddenly I'll just think of it. I, it's weird. It's, I don't know where it comes from. Uh, what are your favorite bands to tour with? Well, I really love the Smugglers. I mean, the, 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 the be, I guess the best criterion for who you'd want to tour with is a band that you would want to see a lot because yeah. you end up seeing them a lot. And I just think the Smugglers are the greatest. And um, but you know we we've, we've toured with a lot of bands and you know there's been a lot of good ones. Uh, I've personally my own uh, my own wish for bands that I tour with is a band that 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 doesn't play the same set every night because you know no matter how good it is after about five or six times you don't want to hear it anymore. So if you have, if they have a lot of songs and they mix it up sometimes it seems fewer and fewer bands are doing that. You know they they've got their a lot of bands they've got their set list. It's mimeographed, you know, it's like every, printed every and, <clears throat> and it's the same thing. And I would bore me being in the band, but it also when you're 
everybody's on tour with you. It's just like when you get so you can predict what each song is going to be, uh, then you know it can get kind of tedious. Yeah. Okay, I have a few more. Um, yeah. <laughs> a lot of your songs are about females, love, breakup. I don't understand. You guys are in a band. Doesn't band equal chicks? <laughs> yes, and and band equals chicks, and chicks equal confusion and pain. <laughs> and you can't have a you can't have a breakup without. Yeah. Uh, without without an initial uh, get together, so um, uh, you know, I just maybe you know you 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 focus on the. I think you have more songs may, make more sense when they focus on the um, on the and, the and it makes more sense to have them when they focus on on the painful part of things. But uh, uh, you know, it's all part of the same ball of wax. Yeah. Um, <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about Alcatraz, the new your new album? It's, it seems like very poppy. And um, was this conception of this album a natural? direction you guys were going in or it wasn't the natural direction that we were going in it was that I had to force it on everybody because uh -oh. <laughs> I I mean I think that if 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 the status quo would have been everybody would have been very happy with just doing another one that sounded like the last two yeah, sweet, yeah. and and I just I I couldn't handle the idea of doing that so I sort of Kevin Army our producer and yeah. I kind of got together and plotted uh -oh. a little coup d'etat uh -oh. <clears throat> and sort of Manage to uh, manage to uh, uh, to to take to take over basically, yeah. and every day sort of reluctantly, but I think basically in the end, kind of yeah. with a growing enthusiasm, yeah. like you know. So Joel and Jim were receptive to it. <clears throat> uh, they not at first, but it you know <laughs> they 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 went they they came around. I mean, they had everyone had see everybody everybody's worried about. You're rocking the boat, you know, like yeah. we have this band that's sort of moderately successful, you know, <clears throat> a lot of bands do better, a lot of bands do worse. Yeah. Everybody's, oh my God, if, if we don't do exactly the same thing we did before, then no one will like us and then yeah. we'll have to like go home and, and cry in our room or whatever. Yeah. You know, I mean, I can understand that, that feeling, but that's just not, that's not the way to make good rock and roll records, you know, is to sort of play it safe. And I, I, um, my, as, as it, my intention on Revenge is Sweet was to end up with a record that was more like Alcatraz, but yeah. I was, I had my, all of my plans didn't come off because wow. of the sort of built-in conservative character yeah. of, the, of the way that the band had become, which is a surprise for me because it's the first time we followed up a record that actually made money and that people generally liked, which was Love is Dead, you know? Yeah. Every time we'd done a record before, it was like, wow, this stuff sucks. Yeah. I like their older stuff. What is this? Yeah, this yeah. And, and so I think we... We, you know, by the time when I was trying to influence, uh, influence things in the way that I like, sort of imagine the songs being, I ran into a wall because it was like, no, we have to play the drums so they go, like, dun da 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 da. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you have a song that's not supposed to go that way, it's like, oh, we can't have a song that does that. That's our sound. You know. So I was, so this time I just, you know, I, I very carefully sabotaged the entire project so there, there wasn't any possible way that we could have that what we were what we started calling the revenge's beat revenge and beat. <clears throat> and uh, and various other things you know I, I wanted to have a dif different guitar so sound on every song and yeah. different vocal sound on every song and I wanted to make the the sounds match the songs a little more you know yeah. within our uh, what we could do and you know I mean I, I I recognize that some people you know some people really like those other records and they're disappointed in um, in this and they just wish that we would just keep doing Love is Dead every year and, and I can sympathize with that. I felt that way when I was a kid about the Ramones, you know. Yeah, but I think a lot of people did. <laughs> but I have to say though that that if the Ramones had after Leave Home after the Ramones leave home and Rocket to Russia, if if they had done twelve more albums exactly like that, yeah. I don't think that would have been good for it anybody. Been more, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I mean it so, but I recognize some people are disappointed with it, and that's fine. I mean, I, actually, I enjoy even when people slag it because at least there's some content in their comments. You yeah. know, it's like everybody who ever said anything about that last record, it was just all basically, if you like us, you'll like it. If you don't, you won't. Is you know, it's just this is more of the same clever, peppy, poppy, punky, whatever, or more of the same lame, terrible stuff. <laughs> but it was just like, I just wanted to have something that was not going to be more of the same, yeah. whether good or bad or whatever, just something else. Yeah. All right, one more question. Um, have you ever met Mr. T, and are there any re legal repercussions that are coming from <laughs> I have not, and, uh, and no, so far. Um, I, I don't expect, I mean, I know he's aware of us. Um, 
I, I think he, uh, my, he was, there was, a, there was a time when we were trying, someone was trying to arrange an interview in Flipside Magazine Flipside. Okay, that, that he yeah. was going to do. And he was, he was like, uh, when I, I was kind of worried about what he was going to say when they approached yeah. him, but he was quoted to me, t quoted as saying, the, um, yeah, those guys are cool. They're not making fun of me. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so, you know, <laughs> for what it's worth, but it never happened. Yeah. So, you know, so I never met him, but uh, I, he seems like an all right guy. And <laughs> I hope he doesn't yeah. try to derail the, the ship of rock or derail the train of rock. A ship gets sunk. I hope he doesn't try to sink the sh sink the train of derailment that <laughs> that we have been uh, lovingly uh, blasting off into orbit for all these years. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, one thing, could you do a legal ID for yeah, us? Okay. Yeah, um. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. You want me to read it just like this? Yeah. All right. Station ID. <laughs> Hi. This is Dr. Frank from the Mr. T Experience, and you're listening to Under Lock and Key on the X eighty eight point nine. Thank you so much.